So you've looted your items, you got everything in your inventory, you close the game and gone it is. But no longer. Today we'll be saving our inventory to JSON file and then later reload it so that whenever you restart the game after closing it, you can continue your gaming session within the game world you created. To start today's tutorial, we first have to wonder where do we want to put our save function. You could put it on the inventory itself, you could put it on a loop panel, you could put it on the player, you could put it in a lot of places. But my advice is make a script for it or put it in a singleton so you can always call it. Right now we're talking about saving the inventory. In the future you probably want to have a safe inventory, safe character, safe stats, uh, safe um, map progress, you name it. There's a lot of things to save and it's nice to have everything ordered and organized in, in one location. For the sake of demonstration, I'm going to be using the import data um, in, uh, singleton that we've been using before. Saving your game data is of course exporting, but like I said, forget about the name for now. This is just a sense of demonstration and we're nearing the end of this tutorial series. In here, I have defined a new function and that is pretty much a reverse Import. This is, of course, importing data into uh, Godot that we've done in episode number two. If you haven't seen that episode, I'll uh, put an annotation uh, right there. And for the save inventory, we're first going to be printing saving to check whether things are working like we want them to work. We're going to be defining a new file. That file is going to be a save file. We open the save file and at this location and we make it a write instead of a read. Then we store the line um, and we convert to JSON the inventory data. So that inventory data dictionary up there that have, we have been filling in the past two episodes is now going to be stored to JSON at line, uh, as, as a single line. And then we close that file because that frees up the resources in our game. So our processor is not keeping this file open all the time. With that said, there's one very important thing where many times it goes wrong for many, especially uh, aspiring starting Godot developers. As you can see here, we approach the user column slash slash folder, and here we approach the res column slash slash folder. This is not something as in that's needed by Godot. This is something that's needed because of Windows, Android, uh, iOS, and, and all the other usually like the, the, the operating systems of the devices we want our game to be played on. If you save it to the REST folder, you will need to give your application permission to change files on the program files folder, for example, on Windows or within the application folder on Android or, or iOS in, in case of mobile development. That's a, a uh, right system that you would have to uh, install when you're exporting your game. I'll be making a tutorial on exporting and, and permissions and rights and, and whatnot for mobile in the latest uh, series. But basically, as you probably know, every single game you play, your save files are not saved in, in case of Windows at program files and then whatever your game name is and then save files. No, it's always stored at user, then your username, and then uh, like app data and then the game and then save games and like it's in a folder somewhere there. And the reason for that is that's a folder which applications are much more free to approach by Windows security than it would be to mutate those files on the program files folder. It's a little bit like whenever you install a game, you always get a pop-up from Windows. Are you sure you want to trust this? Blah, blah, blah. Basically, in that moment, you're giving the permission for that specific uh, installation file to then change folders in the program files. But that doesn't give that program you're installing the rights to be changing files within that file program, that within the file program files to be changing that all the time from there on forth into the future. So that's why we're saving to user and not to res. And that's a very important thing. And it also means we have to be loading from the user uh, file as well. So as for loading, uh, we're in the import data. Let's, let's do that right now. To load our game, we're basically going to be putting a function down here. These two um, blocks of code, they run the moment the game starts. And we want our inventory to load the moment the game starts as well. 
So whenever we start the game, we define a new file. And as you can see, these are like one-on-one -on -one copies. The only difference here is that we approach the user uh, file. And of course we have a read instead of a write because we only want to read our save files when we are loading it and not writing to it. Um, so these are pretty much identical. Again, if you don't know how this works, watch episode number two. Uh, I put the card up there earlier. Um, that said, we do run into one issue if we would run this code. When you install your game, it does not create a save file. This inventory save JSON is not created in the user folder. You could define a inventory save JSON in your in your installation folder that the game should look into whenever there's no inventory save available on the user file. So what you could do is you could define like a starting inventory, like a few pieces of gold, a rusty sword, a wooden broken buckler or whatever. Um, and you could put that in an inventory JSON file, as in if it's the first time you start the game, this is what you're gonna get. In order to do that, we only have to be adding a little bit of code that's quite easy. Let me just look that up. We have to only replace this line of code with an if statement that if not this file exists in the user file, so if it does not exist, you open that file from the rest folder, so the installation folder. And of course, it's a read only, so your program is not gonna run into any errors because it is asking for writing permission. And else, it's gonna be opening that folder if it is available, if, if it does exist, yeah, it's going to be loading it from the user file. So in order for this to work, I have added a inventory save JSON to our project in the data folder that we are approaching. And we can open this and I've set it to have 10 pieces of gold. And that's basically the same 10 pieces of gold that we've defined up here. So we can empty our inventory data right there because now we're defining that 10 gold in our load function. So we don't have to hard code it anymore. So with this done, we have basically made the changes to our singleton. We are loading the, um, the inventory whenever we can, uh, but we're not, we have to define the safe function, but we're not calling this function anywhere yet. So that's the next thing. We got to think, when do we want to save the game? Now that really depends on the type of game you're making, whether it's multiplayer or a single player. And even when it's just single player, you can still like, do you have a menu button somewhere that says save game and you create all kinds of different save games? Or is it more like a hardcore kind of game that you can't save your game in between game sessions? So you can only save as you exit the game. Or do you want to make sure that there's maybe like an auto save function that it saves every five minutes? Or maybe you're just worried that your game is a little bit buggy maybe when you launch it and you want to make sure that the player doesn't feel frustrated whenever he loses like items from his inventory because the game didn't save itself. Then you may just want to save every time the player looted the chest or something like that. For our tutorial series, I'm going to be calling this function the moment a player closes a chest and when it closes the inventory. So every time the player closes the chest, there's a possibility that the inventory has new items. And whenever the player had the inventory panel open, there's a possibility he will be deleting something or he will be changing some things around. And you know, there could be mutations within our inventory dictionary from there as well. So I'll be calling this function in two places when we close the loot panel, which is equal to looting the chest or closing the chest. And I'm gonna be calling it when we close the inventory. For that, we're gonna to go to our canvas layer, which controls, when we go to the map scene, we're on the map, the canvas layer controls the graphical user interface. And on the canvas layer, we have um, two moments where we have an on-close loop panel and an on-close inventory. These two functions are called by um, the connections they made, make when they're called, when they're um, shown on the screen. So when the inventory button is pressed, we add the child inventory and then we get the node connect, close inventory on self, close inventory. So that's when the player presses the close inventory on the inventory panel and the same for the loop panel. So down here, we'll be emitting the signal save inventory. And of course, for this to work, our script needs to know this signal. So we'll be defining the signal up here. So right now, we basically have our save function complete. However, there are still a few minor changes we have to make before this save function is gonna work 
in our code. So let's do those changes right now and then we can test it. Next, we need to make sure that our import data function save inventory is listening to these signals. We haven't connected it yet. Now, and there comes a little bit of a new challenge and another lesson for this tutorial in that often we have demonstrated in this tutorial that to connect signals, custom signals together, you can get the node in which the signal is emitted. And then we connect that emitted signal in the other node to this node and then to a function defined within this script on close inventory, which is right there. However, when we when we would do that in our import data, if we would use our import data script and under the ready function connect the signal save inventory from the map scene, the map scene canvas layer, we have an issue because this um, this singleton will be loaded all the time. And it's finished loading when, for example, you get your login screen or the main menu of your game. That's the moment the singleton is loaded and ready, but the map scene doesn't exist yet at that point. It's not being loaded yet. So the signal would return an error that it cannot find the node you're, you're referring to. So instead of calling the signal or connecting the signal from the uh, import data script, we're going to be connecting the signal from the canvas layer itself. So whenever the map scene is finished loading and then the canvas layer is finished loading as well, we're not going to be calling a node, we're going to be connecting from this node the save inventory signal. We don't have to get a node in front here like we do um, in many other cases, like for example here. We always get a node before we connect because the emitted signal is in that node. In this case, the save inventory signal is in the same node, so we don't need to get a node first. We can immediately connect, but instead of connecting on self, we're going to be connecting to import data. So this is the name of the script without the .gd extension. And then we're connecting it to the on save inventory function that's defined in that import data .gd script. So with this done, we have a functioning safe inventory system there's only a few minor adjustments we need to make to our code for this to work properly. And I'll explain the reason why we have to make those changes. And that's really specific to this tutorial. So this may not be necessary for your game, but I've included this um, bug, you could say, or this change, because I think many people run into this problem and you may be running into this problem as well. So within our import data, we are saving our inventory um, as store line to JSON inventory data. So everything which we have defined in our inventory data is now in JSON. But then when we get it back, when we load our inventory, we load the inventory, but we get it as text. And as far as I know, there's no workaround like that. So in our dictionary, our keys, the 101, 102, 103 are integers. They are saved by our save function into our JSON files as integers, but they are returned in our load, for load code as strings. That means that in our inventory, when we, for example, get the node name and we're referencing that if has node name, this is an integer. We made that an integer on purpose. But now it's looking for if it has that integer, but it doesn't have that integer once you close the game and reloaded it, because now all your node references, 101, 102, 103, are strings and no longer integers. So we need to make a few changes to make sure that everything is a string everywhere in the game so that our code understands what inventory items it needs to be loading. So there's three places that we need to make a minor adjustment. First of all, it is the string here. We're going to be defining it as a string and not as a node, uh, as an integer. Then within our loop panel, we want to verify that the import data inventory data has is now checking for an integer, but we need to be checking for a string. So again, we're going to be setting this number to a string. Remember that we do have to keep all of these integers right here because we're constantly adding plus one and verifying whether it's bigger or, or, or equal to. So for that, it needs to be an integer, but as soon as we're gonna convert that integer into checking whether it exists, um, we need to be converting it to the string. And we need to do the same right here that whenever it finds an empty slot, it should not, it's now defining a new key within the dictionary 
based on this integer. And now we wanted to say that no, you're not going to be making a dictionary key as an integer, but we want to make that a string. And with these three changes, everything what comes into our import data, into our inventory data, is going to be a string by default. So now when we play the game, we can run to our chest, we can loot it. As you can see, we have two steel swords, some gold. We can loot this. Here we go, we got our steel sword. We can maybe loot some more, some more gold. And here more gold. And as you can see, every time we close the chest, this is the first saving because we looted, we closed the loot panel. One saving when we checked our inventory, what is there, again saving, and again saving after looting the second chest, again saving after looting the third chest. So now we got this in our inventory, two swords and 94 gold. I can close this game. When I close it, it's already saved. I can restart my game. And as I open my inventory, my swords and my 94 gold are right there. Now, of course, you may want be ever removing our, um, our, our save file. It could be that maybe you say, okay, my save file is corrupt. There's something wrong with it. I want it gone, I want to delete it. I want to start from scratch with the default inventory save JSON I've defined in my data file. So of course you want to know where do I find this. So that's quite a, a, um, a, a, a route. On Windows, when you're programming on Windows, and of course on Android and on iOS, the user folders are a little bit different, but when you're working in the editor, this will do for now. You go to Windows, you go to Users, you go to the username, in my case, that's Stefan, you probably know me as Stefan GameDav, so that shouldn't be a giveaway, it should be a giveaway. You go to App Data, you go to Roaming, Go. App User Data, and then the project of your Go. Project, or the, the name of your Go. Project. So in my case, my project is called YouTube Workspace, as you can see right on the top there in my Go. Editor. And that's where it has created this inventory save JSON. If I would delete this, and we'll replay the game and open our inventory. We again get the 10 gold we have defined in our default inventory file. And when we load anything here or and loot anything there, we close the game, we reapproach the folder. You can see it has created a new inventory save JSON. So the game creates this file immediately when you restart the game and, and it calls the save function. That's it for today, guys. Now you can save your inventory. You never have to reset that gold counter. You can keep on collecting. In the next episode, we'll be making the loot panel we've created in episode one actually functional. So we're gonna be giving a, a function to every one of the buttons so we can switch our different item category panels um, so that the trash icon works and so that the item inspector works, that we collect the stats from our item table and so forth. I hope to be able to do that in one episode. It might take two, but that's going to be the last one or two episodes of this series. We do have ideas to expand upon the series with a few additional episodes based on the feedback you guys have given in our comments. We are thinking about that, but we also want to start our new series on battle mechanics. The choice for battle mechanics was made by the community. I've asked you, what do you want to see? And the battle mechanics was the majority vote uh, by, by the community. If you have any requests on what to include within those battle mechanics, please put them down in the comments below. For now, if you like this video, hit that like button, smash subscribe, and make sure you hit that bell icon notification thingy to make sure that all the videos we make are gonna pop popping up in your subscriber feed and in your email box. That's it. Um, if you got any questions, also put them down in the comments below or as always, ask them to me on Twitch. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday in the evening European time, but American time zones are in the description below for your convenience. I hope to see you there one day. And for now, keep on coding, keep on gaming. See you next time.